And cannabis already can, you know, depending on the cultivar or chemovar strain that you use, contains these, these terpenoids. So that's where we see the interaction. And that's where things start getting very, very personalized. You know, I see cannabis as really leading the way for personalized lifestyle medicine. Hello, Awaken Beauties. Finally, it's here. The truth to empower women to true inner beauty through healthy biology. And now here is your hostess, Cassandra Keel, your organic beauty and CBD mentor, helping you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by EvokeBeauty.com. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I'm Cassandra, your organic beauty, health, and endocannabinoid mentor. And today we have Miss Laura Logano on the podcast. Now, I first found out about Miss Laura by, as you know, I am a functional medicine uh, junkie. And I was Googling functional medicine, women, and cannabis. And Laura was one of the first to come up on that vast search engine we have access to. And, you know, between her cannabis education program, the plethora of conferences that she speaks at, I am very honored to have Laura on the podcast today as we dig into women-specific detailed CBD and cannabis and how it can really influence our lives and other components that can also help cannabis and CBD work better for us. So before we jump in, I'd like to share with you a little bit about Laura with her uh, incredible background. So Laura Logano is an integrative clinical nutritionist, the author of The CBD Oil Miracle, and co-founder and director of Holistic Canna an online learning platform about integrating cannabis with other holistic approaches. Laura's journey to cannabis was led by her dissatisfaction with what conventional healthcare had to offer her daughter, Isabella, who had a developmental disability. Isabella is now in the workforce preparing to be a barista and on her way to independent living, thanks to integrative healing approaches, including nutrition and hemp-derived CBD oil. Currently, Laura offers cannabis education for both professionals and patients, produces CBD-infused events, consults with cannabis-related companies, and serves on the advisory board of several medical marijuana organizations. So as you can see, she has got a great background. So Laura, are you with us? I'm here, Cassandra. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes, you're welcome, girl. We were just talking about the uh, the long winter and the long embrace of early spring. I see you've got a scarf on over there. I'm in Minnesota and I don't have a scarf on. So <laughs> it tells me something that hopefully we're going to get a break into warm weather here soon. But thanks so much for being on the podcast. You know, there's a lot of things that we can discuss today, but, you know, just so our uh, listeners can get to know a little bit more about you on an intimate and personal level. You know, it, it says in your bio that you came to cannabis and CBD through Isabella. And I've saw sweet, sweet pictures of her in my guy she has grown up since your journey has started. So maybe you could just tap in a little bit about, you know, what awakened you to this world, crazy world right now of CB and cannabis and hemp derived medicine? Sure. Well, you know, it probably started with my original journey, which was looking at nutrition when I was quite young in my mother's kitchen in Brooklyn. And my mother was I would say did not have the best relationship with food. Mm-hmm. Meaning that, you know, she was Italian and Italians love food, but she also was uh, an American at the same time. And so there was sort of this push and pull about what food meant to her. And I felt that there was an influence of food on behavior. Mm-hmm. And that is really how I got into studying nutrition. And then fast forward many, many years after I then did go to school to study nutrition for both my undergraduate and graduate degrees. And I really studied in graduate school nutrition education. And then I had a child who was uh, having a myriad of, of developmental issues. She also, Isabella also had a seizure disorder. 
She had behavioral issues, uh, poor eye contact. Ultimately, all those characteristics uh, would equal a diagnosis of autism. But she was very relatable because that's, that's what I really focused on was her ability to connect with people. And I had been at the time, this is, this is several years ago, of course, there was a lot going on across the country about medical marijuana. Now, California had already approved medical marijuana in 1996, but nobody else was doing anything. And then Colorado approved many, many years later. And I was sort of watching what was going on because, of course, you know, unless you went to, I don't know what college, there was always cannabis on every college campus. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody was ever thinking of it as a healing herb. Mm -hmm. At least nobody was framing themselves that way. But I think if I started thinking back, and I was thinking back to people I knew who were using cannabis on a very daily basis, and I realized you know what? All of those people had some sort of level of anxiety. Mm -hmm. And Isabella has a fairly high level of anxiety that she hides, I'm going to say, very well. She has a lot of splinter skills is what we call them, which a lot of people have splinter skills for all sorts of things. They figure out how are they going to live in the world as it exists. Mm -hmm. So if you're a person who has anxiety, you might say, okay, I'm not going to go to that party at that time because it's going to be too crowded then. I may go at a different time. So we learn how to, you know, and that's in the most simplistic way. We learn mm -hmm. how to manage. And I thought, you know what? I start, started doing some research and cannabis is considered to be a very, very potent anti-anxiety compound. And it's primarily right now what they're looking at is the CBD or the cannabidiol is known to be that compound. So that's really how I got into it, you know, with her is looking at other things that can change. Of course, I had already known about uh, seizures because of the story with Charlotte, Charlotte Figgy and the, the cannabis pro uh, product that was made specifically for her, Charlotte's Web. But uh, there were other things, you know, it was the anxiety. Also, something really exciting, if you want me to branch out into that, was actually healing those tight junctions that we see in leaky gut. So yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Yeah. And at that time, as far as probably research with epileptic seizures, is it was probably the vast research that was available to you at that time. And you know, I think whether it's autistic children, I've done a lot of nano CBD oil with a lot of the epileptic seizure children of ours. And for a parent to be able to take their child down from 26 to 12 seizures a day down to two or three is life transforming experience for them, you know, and their child and the pressure and the stress on the mom. All right, ladies, if you're looking for healthy hair, beautiful skin, and a calm, quiet, clean, collected, powerful mind with superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. And you'll receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's evoqbeauty.com. Use the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. And have you been able to then help other mothers along that same road, kind of help their, their children? Absolutely. I mean, that, it's funny that you should ask that question because when Isabella was little, I was working, you know, mostly at at that time and beforehand, mostly in food writing and public relations and marketing. So I wasn't working as a clinician, but she brought me back on that journey to my original interest in nutrition was that impact mm -hmm. on mood and behavior. And of course we can include, you know, for behavior, anybody who's being affected by seizures, typically when you're talking about being on the autism spectrum, there's usually some sort of behavioral component. Now, I'm not going to, you know, categorize that as neurological because, you know, it's a whole body disorder. But I was helping a lot of families. This is many, many years ago because I was using nutrition, you know, orthomolecular doses of things like fish oils, other fatty acids, acetylcarnitine, enzymes. I mean, there's a multitude of things. And my husband said to me, 
you know, Laura, aren't you a, a, a licensed practitioner? Isn't your, you know, I mean, he, <laughs> I said, well, you know, as a matter of fact, I am. And maybe I should be doing this. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, so it was sort of funny because I came at it from the vantage point of being a mom and really wanting to help other families. And then later on, I did set up a practice. And that's when I went back to study functional medicine at the Institute of Functional Medicine and did the whole training program. So, you know, I'm one of the few dietitians who's gone through the whole pro the entire program with IFM. And it was so life changing to me and everything Cassandra made so much sense. Yeah. I think when you get in, I really view you as a pioneer, you know, in that essence, because you were dabbling at the time and then you knew fundamentally these other functional medicine, we call it systems biology. We have gut, we have a brain, we have amino acids missing in the brain, sometimes genetic, sometimes environmental. And so for you to then layer that on top of what you are already doing, exploratory, you know, just trying things out with Isabella is probably, you know, my assumption is really what sparked it for you because you found out what was working. And I feel, especially in the cannabis industry, this has really been an industry of pioneers and those that are passionate about the power of the plant and finding the ways and the resources and then helping others do the same thing. So I really see that you've you've done that. So you, you've now dealt with families. You then, can you maybe share a little bit about how you kind of formed this really really, really strong collective, which now you have, you know, the holistic Canna education forum where the vast knowledge that you have behind you with all of your partners are really, really incredible. From there, fast forward, how did you come to bringing all of this together? And can you tell me a little bit about the struggles of bringing this about? And because you're really one of the first to bring, to bring an education center to the internet. Well, my business partner and I, who was my business partner at the time, Donna Shields and I saw that there was a really nothing in the, to to be educated about. There was nothing, you know, so I was learning on my own and this is what I've done all along. You know, Mm -hmm. Isabella has taken me on this journey so that when I started investigating what I could do for her to help you know, ameliorate, you know, but she had very long seizures. You know, the seizures she had, Cassandra, were almost an hour long. Grand mal seizures, it's it's very frightening uh, mm-hmm. to see a grand mal seizure, but it's especially frightening to see one that doesn't look like it's ending and it's your baby, you know, a, a small child. So I just hit the ground running to find to find things that I could do with her. Because of course, in the medical world, what they wanted to do was just give her medications. By the time she was uh, four, she was on three different medications and it it wasn't happening. Things were not working for her. So I really had to investigate all those things on my own. However, in the area of seizures and nutrition, I already had a degree and I already had two degrees in nutrition and working on it, you know, my doctorate. So I, I could find those resources easily. When it came to finding the information about cannabis, just even learning about the endocannabinoid system, of course, that was a major aha moment. And realizing that all of this interaction, this superhighway between the brain and the gut is really modulated by the endocannabinoid system. I mean, talk about an, an aha moment. And then I realized that my, for myself, I had recurrent miscarriage, which is an autoimmune disease. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that is a uh, we're, we're seeing an association between autoimmune disease of parents and ha- possibly having you know children who are on the spectrum and with developmental delays because a lot of what goes on in autism is has to do with autoimmune disease and yeah. is this and it's a whole body disorder. So that then started me thinking, wait a minute, I really need to look a lot closer about the endocannabinoid system. And how does this overlay with autoimmune disease? How does this overlay with women's health? And everything just started making sense to me. And I realized, you know what? I really have to help other people, you know, learn about this and figure out, you know, how how to teach them. And I have to say, you know, at the beginning, 
people were not, even, even now, you know, people are not necessarily getting that they need to learn about this. And my feeling, Cassandra, is mm-hmm. I'm a dietitian. Mm-hmm. I'm a nutritionist. It's a plant. Somebody mm-hmm. said to me, and this is going to totally make you laugh. Somebody said to me very, very sincerely, why would I, as a dietitian, want to study cannabis? And I, and I said, well, it's a plant. <laughs> you know? Right, right. It makes, to me, it makes total sense. But what we have is a lot of canophobia. Yep. So, you know, you're very, you know, you and I are both unusual in that we're mm-hmm. willing to, put, you know, I have my name on the front of a book. You know, mm-hmm. you have a podcast. I mean, we're out there. We're very mm-hmm. visible. And in the beginning, I was definitely very concerned. And there were definitely people that were not going to open the door for me you know, the proverbial door. And many of those people who were not going to take me on to do affiliate with um, Mm -hmm. the summit that I had or podcasts or anything, now they're all calling me. Exactly. But it takes people a little while. And I think it's the same for practitioners. But what I see that's going to happen, and I wonder if you see this yourself, is that we see everything that that we see, the change, the paradigm shift usually comes from a swell from the ground up. Mm-hmm. It, it typically does, it's doesn't, it's not trickle down from the top. So let's say if we look at things, you know, a topic that's near and dear to your heart, even beauty and fashion. Right. Beauty and fashion is typically, I know we like to think it's coming from, you know, couture in Paris. Right. Really Paris and couture is usually reflecting what's going on in the street. Yep. So, you know, if we look at music, that starts in the, in the street. That starts mm-hmm. very, very grassroots. And we also, we definitely are seeing that in cannabis because, of course, there are people who have been using cannabis. Cannabis has been around longer than tea. Many people, most people who use cannabis are using it medically, even though they don't call it medical. They're using it for mood disorders or anxiety, depression, insomnia, and pain. And those are exactly the top three reasons why cannabis is recommended medically. So once you start putting all of that together, you realize, wait a minute, this maybe that's a good way to affect change from the ground up. So I think it's going to be the patients or the clients or the consumers going in to their practitioner and saying, hey, well, do you know anything about this? And I think that's when the practitioners are going to say, you know what, I need that education. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and that's why it's an ode to you. It's an ode to a lot of these organizations that are running on basically zero funds, right? And are a a swell of educational materials. And unfortunately, because of the way the government is structured, any education and or I should say research studies have to be privately funded or basically donated. So there's this, there's this really big chasm that's going on right now because it's kind of exploded per se of who's going to be involved. But it still comes down to that grassroots level, what you're talking about. And it always goes, and it's a great honor and it's a great responsibility for those that have studied, understand it. And I think for you and for myself, I mean, I've only been doing this for three years, but believe me, I am connected to some really quality individuals. It's unfortunate to see so many people getting in, selling it at, I mean, for gosh sakes, shoe stores. This is a medicinal plant and it needs to be respected in that way. And so pain, anxiety, sleep, and autoimmune, you know, so if we talk about beauty, so Elementa and I will be doing the podcast and or the webinar this month for skincare and CBD and does it really work? Now, I can probably tell you 80% of the market, if you get on, if you go to Sephora, it is cannabis sativa oil. It is hemp seed oil. Okay. So it's not an active cannabidiol that's in the product. So then if you raise the question to how much active cannabidiol, actual isolate or full spectrum, do you actually need for it to really work? You know, dosing 50 milligrams into a product, unfortunately, probably isn't going to be enough if it's in the wrong form and not delivered 
biomimetically into the skin. So there's this delivery issue, there's quality issue. You've spoken very fervently about quality and the snake oil that's on the market. For you, listeners of Awaken Beauty Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Simply go to www.audibletrial.com slash Awaken Beauty Podcast. That's www.audibletrial.com Awaken Beauty Podcast. So if we really, if we kind of really step and fast forward into what you specifically work with on an individual basis and what you teach on, I am very also very passionate about nutrition. So, you know, let's talk about leaky gut. Let's talk about hormones. Let's talk about menopause. You know, whether it's an autoimmune or menopause, we both agree it's an endocannabinoid deficiency. And so there are all kinds of ways nutritionally and with CBD or cannabis and, you know, microdosing that can help us. Can you speak a little bit intimately about what you know, both scientifically and experientially? Uh, Let's just kind of go and start off with hormones, you know, endometriosis, PCOS, uh, menopause, you know, and how virtually the endocannabinoid system can be soothe to help women with that kind of issue. Sure. So Cassandra, I think maybe we should just do a little two minute of what the endocannabinoid system is in case people haven't heard of it. So the endocannabinoid system is a system in our bodies that nobody has ever heard of because it was discovered, I believe, in the 80s, but it didn't come forward for people to really learn about it for whatever reason. Uh, I think probably, I suspect because it had the word canna in it. Mm -hmm. And I had people say to me, well, the person who discovered it is the same person, you know, Raphael Meshulam and his team who also worked on CBD and isolating THC, Mm -hmm. which of course is the most famous cannabinoid in the cannabis plant responsible for the, going to call it for lack of a better word, intoxicating effect. I always like to underscore that CBD is psychoactive. That's why it works. Just Just like caffeine is psychoactive. So I think people you know, understand what, you know, what that means once they hear about caffeine. So the endocannabinoid system is a system of, of balance and homeostasis. It's a receptor. It's a lock and key system. Most of the systems in our body work in, in a lock and key way. So we have, you know, we have receptors and then we have the compounds that connect with the receptors, sort of the way we have insulin and glucose, where insulin is the key that allows glucose to enter the cell. So we produce actually our own cannabinoids, which we call endocannabinoids or inside. So endo meaning inside or internal, and that those are 2AG, which of course is an acronym. And the other one is called anandamide, which the word ananda is uh, Sanskrit for the term bliss. Mm -hmm. And we produce our own. So, I mean, we know that we produce those compounds when we engage in certain activities that are all really stress-reducing activities. So those endorphins that we thought we were producing during exercise, not so fast, those are endocannabinoids. Right. The feeling of bliss that we have, sex with you know, an orgasm, mm-hmm. that is your endocannabinoid system at work. Meditation, yoga, tapping, for anybody who knows what tapping is, and emotional yeah. tea, all mm-hmm. of those things are producing endocannabinoids. And a good food plan, I I tend not to use the word diet because I feel like that's a four-letter word for a lot of people, but an anti-inflammatory food plan, you know, certain foods will actually help to upregulate that endocannabinoid system. So what the theory is, and this theory has been postulated by Ethan Russo about endocannabinoid deficiency and endocannabinoid tone. He believes that everybody has a certain tone And probably that tone and that deficiency changes throughout the life cycle. So I think if we even look at women 
and that labile mood that women that some women have during their you know their fertility time period in their lives is probably intimately related with the endocannabinoid system. When we talk about hormones, we talk about neurotransmitters. That is the endocannabinoid system working with an interplay with our hormones and with our neurotransmitters. And I always like to remind people, you know, your head is attached to your body. These are not two, these are not two separate things. So what's happening in your gut is happening everywhere in your body. I just gave a talk on cannabis nutrition in the microbiome. This is the micro, you know, the, you'd have, if you talk to people who study the microbiome, they'll say, who's hosting who? Because it's the microbiome is directing everything. And we know that the endocannabinoid system is intimately involved with that. So what we see is that for women who have uh, PMS, or now they call it premenstrual dysphoric disorder when it's much more severe, for women who have endometriosis, uh, recurrent miscarriage, severe menopausal uh, symptoms. This is the endocannabinoid system that is not uh, you know, working up to snuff, whether it's because you're producing too much of the endocannabinoids and your receptors are not functioning properly. I don't think we, we necessarily know exactly what's going on. And that's why, of course, in many cases for women, doing all these stress-reducing techniques can be so powerful. I mean, I, I know, do you work with, you work with energy medicine, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really passionate piece for me because I feel much of what you're touching base with and the fact that you just did this, this speech on the biome, nutrition, and the endocannabinoid system. To your point, the endocannabinoid system is the largest regulating system in the body. And when it comes to hormones and even menopause and um, fertility, you know, we're lined with CB2 receptors and CB1 receptors. And I've heard kind of just when you even think about mood, the anandamide, when you say bliss molecule, rises and lifts with different times of our menses, which enhances why we get these up and down modes with our menses, in which in correlation is why we have so many women, and I'm a formulator, making products to help, you know, soothe on the stomach or to take to calm down the system with our menses. Same with pain regulation. One really, really unique piece that Dr. Jake Felice brought out was CBD or cannabis is like the only neurotransmitter that upregulates and goes into a retrograde. So basically it goes up our neurotransmitters flow up versus down. So if we think about whether it's anxiety or ADHD or just people that are just so focused and we've got our brain just starts just shooting out, whether it's pain or that kind of situation, instead of flowing down, you know, it regulates up to slow that down and stop and interact between that pain regulation. So there's so much fundamental things that we know, but when it comes to women, I think that we're really intuitive and that we're using the medicine and just trying it and it's individual for everybody. So inflammation, 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 it's aging. Inflammation is pain. Inflammation is leaky gut. And I think you would agree most of us are walking around, whether it's psoriasis or it's migraines or it's leaky gut, it's your brain's on fire and you have a, you got a lot of inflammatory. So to your point, these other components built into our lifestyle, nutritionally, our exposome with toxins, we really have to take the responsibility and not grabbing CBD as the next hot thing. Mushrooms aren't the next hot thing. It's really working with individuals such as yourself, whether it's doing DNA testing or what have you to really figure out what this kind of like full picture is on how our endocannabinoid system is supported to your very point. Uh, yes, I couldn't have said it better. We, it is totally individualized because I have seen this in my practice. You know, I was for years impacting the endocannabinoid system without knowing I was doing it. And I right. think most, most practitioners who are looking to affect behavior change through making better choices for food, using aromatherapy and essential oils. I mean, that is like one of the best examples. Cannabis as a plant 
contains terpenes. Mm -hmm. So terpenes mm -hmm. are these volatile organic compounds. And people say, oh, well, what does that mean? Well, a terpenoid is the beautiful scent that you get from plants. So a great example is just take your fingernail and scrape that on an, a lemon, scrape that on a lime, a citrus fruit, or the, the fragrance that you get from vegetables. Think about a tomato that grows in the summer, you know, a beautiful Jersey tomato, as opposed to a tomato that grows in the dead of winter in a hothouse. Those are two very different tomatoes. And we know that that's, that beautiful scent that you will get from plants, those are often, you know, the terpenoids in the plant. And those terpenoids then are often taken, derived from all the plants to make essential oils. So cannabis contains essential oils like limonene. Mm -hmm. And limonene we know is obviously in citrus fruit. And it's very, very uplifting. So for people who want an uplifting experience, they would use limonene. And if you combine that in your life, whether you're using it as, you know, directly on your skin or in a diffuser, it can really make the difference. Whereas linalool, which is in lavender, can be very soothing. So I think these are great ways that you can impact your mood and your endocannabinoid system and cannabis already can, you know, depending on the cultivar or chemovar strain that you use, contains these, these terpenoids. So that's where we see the interaction. And that's where things start getting very, very personalized. You know, I see cannabis as really leading the way for personalized lifestyle medicine and getting people to really take charge of their own health and understand, wait, how does this, you know, how does this really impact me? What I find, Cassandra, is that people often throw the baby out with the bathwater. So if they have one experience that doesn't meet their expectation with whatever it is, they say that isn't that doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah, I I absolutely agree with you. Which goes back to the issue of the market right now, right? So they walk into a store or to a co-op, and you have a mass market product that may not be to the height or the the quality that you need or you sell, you know, you buy, there's a plethora of private label out there and you just don't really know where it's coming from. To your point about the terpenes, uh, also, I, I'd be interested in your thoughts about minor cannabinoids because I don't mm. really like to isolate, you know, I, I really highly respect uh, Russo and Mishulam on their findings, but I don't want to take away the quality of sometimes an isolate can work really well for someone and their needs. And sometimes a full spectrum or a broad spectrum can work. So for us, we have a CBD and high CBG product, which I find really valuable. And I'm really interested in the CBG aspect being a bone stimulation product mm -hmm. for women. I think that's profound. I mean, so when we can take these minor cannabinoids, you can also personalize an artisan product with terpenes. Uh, you know, that can be really, really, really powerful. And I think we have a long ways to go with the research. Uh, but everybody's endocannabinoid system is different at different times of the day. So I think you're right. There's, there's so many products that I think it's really overwhelming for individuals. All right, ladies, if you're looking for natural, organic, solution-based beauty and superior CBD, go to evokebeauty.com. That's E-V-O-Q beauty.com and receive 25% off your very first order with the code AWAKEN. Again, that's E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Type in the code AWAKEN for 25% off your first order. Hey! That can be really, really, really powerful. And I think we have a long ways to go with the research. Uh, but everybody's endocannabinoid system is different at different times of the day. So I think you're right. There's, there's so many products that I think it's really overwhelming for individuals. Uh, are there specific tips that you share with your clients when they start on a regime? Well, you know, I always start people hopefully getting them to change other things in their lifestyle. So the typical thing, and I'm sure you see this too, 
well, and especially because I think I'm in, uh, you know, the go-go city of the world. You know, yeah, you I'm are. Like, you know, so I'm in, you know, right here in Metro New York. So everybody is, you know, in overdrive pretty much 24-7. So there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of insomnia. Those are, ch- and those often go hand in hand. So the first thing I do is find out from people very simply with insomnia, you know, what's going on with their sleep. Mm-hmm. How many people who are sleeping, you know, with the television on, with the lights on, with the cell phone under their, under their head. I think we're going to find out an enormous amount about, and I think actually this data, these data are already out, but maybe they're being not fully revealed about the impact of those electromagnetic, that electromagnetic frequency on us. Huge. Absolutely huge. I fully, fully agree. You know, so there, right there is an issue. So if we're still going to live the same unhealthful lifestyle and then just apply whatever, it doesn't have to be CBD or cannabis. It could be anything. We need, that's really not what I'm talking about. I really want people to change everything. It's sort of like, you know, if you're talking about beauty and applying products to our skin, the first thing we have to do is change the inside because that gut health, you know, we we used to think that, you know, the skin, we used to say the skin was the biggest organ. Actually, the microbiome is the biggest organ. I like that. that. Yeah. That's good. that microbiome, of course, as we know, is impacted by the endocannabinoid system. Yes. And then that's going to reflect on our on our skin and our outer be- and our, you know, and our skin health. But I, I you know what I want to comment on because I think it's very fascinating. You know, right now, of course, we're seeing a lot of the big box stores and chains selling, say they're selling, you know, C B D products. Well, what they're selling, of course, are the products you were just mentioning you know, the skin-based products. And yeah. some of them have hemp seed, as you pointed out. And hemp seed is a, I love hemp seed products. I think, Good I, fat. I, think, I think they're awesome. So we have, you know, hemp hearts that you can put on your mm-hmm. food, hemp protein powder, hemp fiber, hemp flour, hemp, hemp oil, of course. And hemp oil is used as a salad oil. It, it doesn't work as well as a cooking oil unless it's at a low temperature because the smoking point is not high enough. And, and of course, it's, it is fantastic for the skin. And that's because it does have antioxidant benefit. Now, when you're talking about that benefit for the skin from CBD, you really have to go to the aerial part of the plant, right? Mm-hmm. The flower. And a lot of products are using the leaf and the stem, which aren't quite as high, of course, in, in uh, CBD, because that is from the female part, the flowering part of the plant. From my vantage point, Cassandra, what I see is that it's a start. It's Mm -hmm. a start because, you know, with everything in life, if somebody comes into my practice and they're, you know, they're not eating breakfast or they're having this standard American diet, which is also known as SAD, that is actually a real acronym. If that's what they're consuming, you know, if they're not having breakfast and they're having four lattes, and then at four o'clock, they're hungry. This is very, very typical. And then they have a Snickers bar and, you know, a salad. And then they come home, they're so stressed out. And when I'll see a lot of women have an entire bottle of white wine, and they typically will have a pretty decent dinner, but then they can't figure out why they can't get up in the morning and why they're so stressed out. Obviously, I know that if then that person makes this one little change where, you know, they start eating breakfast, one little thing for breakfast, maybe they decide, they decide to have one hard cooked egg. I think it's fabulous because they've made this one little change. So what I see is that the market is really trying to recover from canophobia Mm -hmm. that, you know, I wrote an article in the Huffington Post about canophobia many years ago. And it's improved for sure, but it's these little tiny steps that we're taking. Yeah, I fully agree with you. It's you keep kind of waving back to the lifestyle issue, and it, it's so critically important. And if even thinking about our mind, so I'm studying to be a hypnotherapist right now. And when you even think about how breath, engaging breath, and slowing down, and we, 
with hypnotherapy, you know, it's, it's not what people think. It's getting between the critical factor barrier where your memory and your imagination and your consciousness and just how even that impacts your endocannabinoid system, getting that to slow down. I mean, autoimmune issues can stem from nutritional deficiencies, genetic SNPs, and a lot of large, large part of it too is just the toxins that dump out of our brain when we're not thinking correctly or in anxiety and things of that nature. So you're exactly right. There's discrepancy between really what's in the product, the quality of the product, and then understanding your personal needs and where you can work individually with somebody like you or from one of your practitioners from your school. So I think that the bulk of this conversation really comes back to, yeah, there's studies with menopause and the bliss molecule molecule anandamide. We can probably heighten our risk of, you know, infertility and and other issues there and take down our hot flashes. Um, children with epilepsy, it has become such a blessing. Unfortunately, it's not very cheap for individuals, you know, so that's something that we have a crossroads with, but it all comes back to personal lifestyle, personal decisions, and accountability in our lives to create an ecosystem that's really supportive for endocannabinoid system. So, you know, I just really, really want to thank you for kind of reorientating the conversation to, it really does come back to personal decisions and your lifestyle. CBD and cannabis is not, we can't cover symptoms with it. Is that kind of what you're kind of getting to? I, I yes. So I, I, I have to say, Cassandra, that sometimes if somebody comes into me and they are really at the end of their rope, sometimes, and they're, they've made changes and they haven't had the impact. They really want a really major impact. In that case, sometimes I will have them start on CBD, but I usually have them, I make a deal with them. If this works, which you sh- which I know it will, to ameliorating certain symptoms, then you're, we're, you're not going to disappear. You're coming back. And now, you know, they sort of buy into believing me and working with me. Let's then make the other changes. And most of the time I've been very successful with that because, you know, I want people to be able to not just believe in what the practitioner says, but also to believe in themselves and the power of their body to be a healing vessel. And I think we've lost sense of that. We've lost sense that. that, you know, we have the power. You, yep. you have you have to harness it. I, I love that. And, and as a practitioner, that that is Hippocrates, right? It's it's the healing power of the body. And it's actually us encouraging, supporting, and helping you understand the power you have to heal the mind, the body, the spirit, you know, and there's all kinds of ways that we can do that. It's easy to get distracted in the, the sexy supplements world and all of that CBD. But yeah, you're right on. I really, really love that. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash Awaken Beauty Podcast. So in your kind of to close things up, I really, two things, I would love to know kind of what's ahead for you. I know that you have a CB miracle and you're going to be doing some tour, you know, with Elementa and Elisa and her new book this summer. Uh, you've got the education portal and kind of where you're going this summer and what's up next for you in the next three months. And where do you see the industry as far as CBD and cannabis going, connecting with all the ties and events that you speak at? Well, I, I think that what we're going to be seeing, of course, I, I, I think we're going to be seeing medical marijuana and also adult personal use, which a lot of people call recreational, which I don't like because that demeans the plant. You bet. I think, I think we're going to see this sweeping the nation mm-hmm. and also around the world. We're, we're definitely going to be seeing that. But I do think that the plant that is really going to take off is hemp. Now we know that hemp is cannabis, you know, so just for clarification, cannabis is one plant and we have marijuana plant, which is above 0.3% THC. And for the most part, it's 
way above 0.3% THC, and then hemp is below 0.3% THC. And I think we're going to be seeing a lot about hemp now with the U.S., you know, with the passing of uh, the U.S. Farm Bill, in, uh, which happened at the late end of 2018, seeing a lot more hemp products, not only for wellness and beauty, but also for building fiber, uh, you know, which of course is a different type of plant, but it's still the hemp plant, a different variety. But we're going to be seeing a lot more. So it's sort of funny because I don't think people realize that historically we're sort of, we're going full circle because Mm -hmm. when this country was founded, uh, it was the Jamestown colon, uh, colonists were required to grow hemp. Right. You know, Jefferson and Washington grew hemp, smoked hemp, uh, enjoyed hemp. And was, you know, Betsy Ross's flag was made of hemp. The Declaration of Independence is on hemp. Um, You know, Ford made a car of hemp. So, I mean, we have a lot of things that have happened already historically. And, you know, when people say, you know, history repeats itself, Mm -hmm. you know, where I think we're moving in that direction for, for sure. So we're going to be seeing that. I think we're going, as you pointed out, I think we're going to be seeing a lot about the other cannabinoids in the Mm -hmm. plant. You know, it's not going to just be THC and CBD. I actually think what we're going to be hearing about are the acid formats of the cannabinoids, meaning the, the formats that are not decarboxylated or heated. We're going to be hearing about that. The other cannabinoids, the other components of the plant, and, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, it takes a long time for research to get to practice. And, you know, people don't, people don't like that. And I can tell you, as a parent of a child with a disability, it's often the parents, particularly the mothers, who are the ones who are really making these changes happen. Right. Because if you have a child who is, ha- whether your child, like my child, was having seizures that were almost an hour long, or you have a child who's having 200 seizures a day, or you have a child who can't make eye contact, or is literally spinning. And I'm not using this in a metaphoric way. Literally spinning. Literally, yep. You're not waiting. Yep. You're not. You are not waiting. You know, unless the modality or the approach is super dangerous, you are not waiting. And I really think that other, that uh, healthcare professionals, whether it's a doctor, a nurse, a dietitian, a hypnotherapist, whoever it is, a chiropractor, I mean, I'm not, people are going to call me and say, left me out. Anybody have to really be listening to their clients when they come in and not just dismissing them. I mean, I, f- I found in my journey with Isabella that a lot of things people were dismissive about. Is They were especially dismissive about nutrition. So even when Isabella's seizures were ameliorated using nutrition because I had her on a modified, you know, she was on a ketogenic food plan right, and, modified, right. and then modified Atkins yep. seizures went away. Yeah. Um, the keto and the, and the, you know, CBD and, and cannabis is really, really powerful together. I mean, it does need to be absolutely really, really closely watched over, but it's, it's super powerful. I mean, itself and right on with the acid components, CBDA, THCA, all of those, I think those are really powerful, can be very powerful as well. Yeah. I think it's going to continue to blow up. One interesting piece, you know, maybe even flipping it real quick, you know, I've got clients that come in and we're in Minnesota, it's not legal, but I'm going to be completely honest. You know, my clients are making gummies for their moms. You know, mm-hmm. they're in pain and they have different autoimmune issues. And so they research it, they Amazon it, they get the materials, they figure out how to get the material and they make it. And even though there's a lot of medical professionals that mm, don't want to look at it, uh, they will have to look at it. And there's also a lot of medical professionals that I see saying, you know what? you're doing that. That's good. Thank you for letting me know. Keep on doing it. So I'm happy to see that there are a lot of them waking up. um, And when they really understand, I think that the biggest thing that we can help them understand is the endocannabinoid system. It's not about CBD. It's not about THC. It's really about, do you understand that you are actually treating the endocannabinoid system? 
Do you know how to get that to work collectively together? Do you know how to heal and close up the gut so that it can all work better together? So, you know, I love your approach and I think it's the right one. And I think it's the appropriate one because when we get schizo and get into all these different fragments of isolate, you know, ethanol derived, CO2 derived, it distracts us from how our body works and how we heal and how we can help each other find the best components that will work individually for the patient. I really love your approach. So for you, uh, I always end the podcast with... uh, just something personal for you, Laura, that doesn't have to be anything nutrition, wellness, or cannabis derived, but what have you personally awakened to recently in your life that you would want to share you know, with the listeners uh, that you think would be helpful or something that is just on your heart? I, I, I think uh, it's really crucial for all of us to do self-reflection and not once a year or when you go to a workshop, but maybe even start out your morning. I mean, this is, people talk about this a lot, but it's such a simple thing to do. And a lot of people call call it a gratitude journal. Um, Just any amount of self-reflection, because I think it's very easy for all of us to see, you know, the grass is greener. I mean, the grass will always be greener, but what is it that we're looking at and what is it that we value? And I think what's happened for many of us, I mean, even if I look at uh, my own family, you know, I come from a family, like most of us in the U.S., a family of immigrants. And my immigrant family, I mean, I have a lot of cousins in Italy and they have... (laughs) They have come to my house. They think my house is like an enormous palace, uh, which is funny to me because, of course, in the scheme of where I live, it is not. Right. So, you know, it's it's a comparative and relative thing. So I think just having that, you know, having that self-reflection to, to know that we're all blessed, no matter mm-hmm. what situation we're in, we're all blessed. And to find that one, that one thing, that one feeling that we know is is good and pushing us to the next thing. And sometimes, you know what, Cassandra, that one feeling could be the one thing we've been talking about is anxiety. Because you know what? You have to have a little bit of anxiety to drive you to mm-hmm. do the ne- to do the next thing. Without that, yeah. What do you I love mean? that. Yeah, I think I think the balance conversation is really a hard one because there is no such thing as balance. Yeah. And we're always kind of you know, I, um, you know, there's in functional medicine, there's the stress curve. Have you ever seen it? So, mm-hmm. you know, you and I would understand it or appreciate it where on the very, very far end of one end is you're can't get out of bed. You're depressed, low mood, yeah. low energy. And then you have, you know, I'm depressed. I have migraines I'm kind of low energy, probably where the adrenal fatigue starts. And then right here is kind of that sweet spot. And it, it kind of shares that, you know, that you're kind of in this modest mode between a stress state and a low state. And so that's kind of like the sweet spot. We're rarely, rarely ever there, right? And then we get to anxiety and really, really hyper stimulated and then hyper, hyper stimulated and then just anxiety and all these mental disorders. You know, I just think it's a really beautiful curve to kind of really what you're saying, you know, self-reflect and meditate you know, where are you on that stress curve? And, you know, there's an appropriate place to be on the stress curve and who is your support system to reach out to to help you kind of stay in that, let's call it the sweet spot, you know? So I really like that. Thank you. Well, Laura, where can our Awaken Beauty podcast listeners find you? Tell us, uh, you know, the, you know, the education center, your website, tell us all about it. Sure. Uh, well, you can find me at laura at lauralagano.com and lauralagano.com is where you could also find my book and there is also or there will be a link for my education course but you can also go to a separate website holistic canna so the word holistic and then the word canna so there's two c's in the middle dot com for my uh my full education program on integrating cannabis with holistic modalities. And and I would urge people to reach out to me, you know, and, you know, for anything, appointments, 
looking at the book, if you have questions about, you know, cannabis education or just questions in general about how to even enter the field. I'm always, I always want to encourage people to enter the field. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you so much, Laura. I really believe in women rising women and you are one powerful woman out there. So stay strong, keep doing what you're doing and, uh, you know, we'll maybe connect with you in the future and catch up with you on a podcast episode. And thank you all for listening to the Awaken Beauty podcast. So make sure you like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And please, please, I ask you, don't just give a five star. Don't just give a like. Please leave your aha moment that you have had with our time with Laura Logano today so that you can bless other women on what you awaken to as well. So all for now, signing off. Hello, Awaken Beauties. Thank you for joining Cassandra today. Were you inspired to bring your sexy back? Please like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Interested in high quality natural products, for your hair, skin, and wellness, please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that's evokebeauty.com. E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back.